Hello, welcome to Sleep Stories. Today we'll be reading the story, Pretty the Dog. I hope you find the reading of this story to be relaxing and above all, sleep inducing. So without any further ado, Pretty the Dog. There once was a dog named Pretty. Pretty was not a small dog, but she wasn't large. At times, she fancied the notion of being small, so she could curl up in a lap without either end spilling over. Other times, she would have rather been large, so she could intimidate or maybe even terrify any intruders and other dogs. So I suppose, in a way, she was the perfect size. Now, it seemed every time Pretty went for a walk, some stranger would approach and say the same thing. What a pretty dog. What is her name? Now, Pretty didn't mind too much at first, but it became very tiresome. After all, she thought, they just said my name loud and clear. What don't they understand? Nevertheless, she was always very polite. A wag of the tail and some delighted panting usually left her admirers rather pleased. One day, as Pretty looked out the window, reflecting upon the coziness of her life and wondering when she could go outside to do her business, something grabbed at her attention that she simply could not ignore. A baby bird had fallen from its nest across the street. Pretty ran to the door as fast as she could, barking her heart out along the way. Her person had no trouble hearing her and assured her that no one was at the door. Pretty barked again, insisting that she knew there was no one at the door, but that she must go help that poor little bird. Her person walked over and opened the door. Pretty was so relieved that her person had understood her frantic appeal. But as soon as her feet hit the ground, she heard her person say something unexpected. Okay, go potty. Pretty turned around, tilted her head, and stared incredulously. She barked at her person that she did not need to go potty. She had to go save the bird across the street. Her person immediately replied, Pretty, stop barking and go potty. She barked, I don't need to go potty but then promptly remembered that she did indeed need to go potty. So reluctantly, she went. Her person then called her to come back inside. Pretty started walking back toward the door, but then hesitated. Am I forgetting something, she thought. No, I don't think so. Or wait, wasn't I out here for a reason? Oh yeah, to go potty. Wait, no, that wasn't it. What was it? Pretty, come inside, her person insisted. Then, like a volcanic eruption, the thought exploded into her mind. Bird. Pretty whirled around as fast as four legs can possibly move and made to run across the street. Her person yelled behind her, Pretty, where are you going? But Pretty was not about to let herself become distracted again. She dashed across the street and found the tiny little bird. She sniffed once, and then she sniffed twice. Then she sniffed once again. She heard a commotion behind her and turned to see her person rapidly approaching. Pretty stood confidently. This was her moment. In a matter of seconds, her person would understand why she'd had to run away like that and would probably even consider her somewhat of a hero, akin to bomb-sniffing police dogs. One thing was for sure, she was about to get the most considerable of all compliments. Good girl. When her person got close enough to see the baby bird, she halted momentarily. She then drew a little closer and said it. Good girl, Pretty. Pretty and her person sat staring at the bird for a good little while before her person finally scooped the bird up 
carefully of course, and began walking to the house with pretty following closely behind. When they got inside, Pretty watched closely as her person wrapped the bird in a dish towel with its tiny head poking out. Her person then left the bird on the counter and left the room. Pretty wasn't sure where her person was going, but she wasn't about to let that bird out of her sight. She stayed in the room with it. Her person returned shortly with a small cardboard box. She sat the box on the counter and left the room again. Pretty, once again, stayed behind until her person returned. This time with two big handfuls of grass and leaves that she had evidently collected from the yard. She placed the foliage in the bottom of the box and then placed the small bundle containing the bird in as well. That should be fine for now, said Pretty's person. I have some work to get done, but maybe later we can figure out what this little bird needs for food. So, for the next few hours, Pretty sat on the floor, staring up at the box on the kitchen counter. She could hear her person in the background, sorting through the mail, vacuuming the floors, and typing away on her laptop. Through it all, Pretty did not budge. Finally, her person came into the kitchen and said it was time to find this little bird some food. Pretty thought maybe she could share her food with the bird, but her person didn't seem to realize that that was an option. Her person called her and they went outside and hopped into the car. Pretty was never sure where they were going any time they got in the car. She knew only one thing, she must protect them both. On many occasions, she had seen two small black strips slide across the windshield. They were thin and moved in wide strokes from side to side. She didn't know what they were or what they wanted, but she knew they were dangerous, and they mostly came out when it was raining. So anytime her person opened the car door, Pretty would bolt past her and make sure to be the first in the car in case they showed up. Generally, she would bark at the windshield for a moment in an attempt to dissuade them from showing up. It usually worked, except in the rain, No amount of barking or lunging at the windshield seemed to do any good in repelling them when it was raining. What's more, she wasn't sure her person could see them. She never seemed startled by them and she would even get upset with Pretty for barking. So of course, if her person couldn't see them, then they were all the more dangerous and Pretty must stay even more vigilant against them. So. Pretty hopped into the car and began barking. Her person told her to stop, as always, and she did. But the evil black strips did not pop up into the windshield the whole drive. You're welcome, Pretty thought to herself. They arrived at one of Pretty's favorite spots, the pet store. She loved all the smells and seeing the tiny little puppies. Her person put Pretty on the leash so that her person would not get lost and they got out of the car. The door opened and they entered the shop. She ran right up to the small enclosures where the new puppies lived. She loved seeing them because their spunk seemed to bring her back to when she was a puppy. Also, she had a responsibility to the younger generation. She always made sure to stop by and have a word with the new puppies in the store. She'd always give them a quick crash course in how to protect the family that they would eventually have and on how to be a good dog. She never forgot to mention that people don't seem to like it when you pee on the floor. But you never know how different people will react so it's a good idea to try doing it every now and then for the first few months or so of having a new family. Also. If anyone new ever comes to your new house, you should pee on the floor because maybe it will be okay when certain people are around. You never can be sure until you try. After her quick chat with the puppies, she and her person went to the front counter where she inquired as to how she should take care of this little bird and what she ought to feed it. The clerk was very friendly and informed her that worms would probably be the best thing. but. 
it may not be able to chew for itself depending on how young it is. So Pretty's person bought some small worms and they headed back outside to the car. Pretty raced into the passenger seat and gave a quick bark at the windshield. Once again, they went the whole drive home with no interruptions thanks to Pretty. When they arrived home, her person went straight to the bird. She opened the little container of worms and dropped one in right next to the bird. It looked at it for a moment, but then looked away. Oh no, said her person. It must not be old enough to eat on its own. She stood looking at the bird and contemplating how she would feed it. Pretty still thought the bird would probably rather share her food than eat some lousy old worm. However, just as her person was about to take the worm out and try something else, the bird poked its head out of the towel a little further and gobbled up the worm. Over the next few weeks, Pretty was very pleased with how well she had been taking care of her rescued bird. She always reminded her person of feeding times and made sure to spend most of her time guarding the box in the kitchen. Just a few short days after finding the poor thing, it began to be more lively, hopping around the box and chirping in the mornings. Then, just a couple weeks later, it took flight, right there in the house. It only flew out of the box and lighted upon the counter on the opposite side of the kitchen, but Pretty and her person agreed that it was time to return this little bird into the wild, where it could be free and be with all of its friends. So they took it outside the very next morning and sat it upon the front steps. It hopped around and pecked a little bit at the hard concrete beneath its feet. And then it flew. It flew up and up, higher and higher. It flew outward toward the trees and finally disappeared from view. Pretty's person figured it might never come back to see them, but over the next few days, she put a single worm out in the front yard each morning until the container was empty. The worms did disappear, but she figured another bird may have gotten them, or perhaps they had dug down to find a home beneath the front lawn. Little did she know that that little bird did come back just about every other day or so and ate the worm. She also didn't know that the other half of the days, Pretty ate the worms while outside for potty breaks. Turns out they actually weren't so bad. A couple weeks after setting the bird free, Pretty and her person laid in bed, getting ready to sleep. Neither one knew, but they were both thinking about that little bird that they had saved and wishing it well. Her person reached over stroked pretty softly behind the ears and said, good girl, such a good girl. <laughs>